At the casino cage, wads of cash in hand, the security camera captures a real player, a larger than life gambler, a familiar face at world poker tournaments in Las Vegas. Day 1A chip leader Lazaro Hernandez is once again setting the pace. With posts from luxury boats and private planes, Lazaro Hernandez fashioned himself as a high flying high roller. Turns out he was the mastermind of a $230 million drug counterfeiting operation. And he was gambling with people's lives. These thousands of bottles were all originally prescribed and filled for patients. Now they fill an evidence room at Gilead Sciences in Northern California. Every single bottle was discovered in a complex criminal drug diversion scheme. We are playing a bit of a game of whack-a-mole. Lori Mayall fights to find the counterfeits every day. She oversees global product security at Gilead, which manufactures HIV medications, Bictarvi and Discovi, drugs at the center of Hernandez's fraud. We know that upward to 80,000 of bottles of counterfeits were entered into the supply chain. And what would those be worth if, if someone was paying full retail price? Those bottles would be about $230 million. Here's how drug diversion works. A patient fills a prescription for a medication worth several thousand dollars, but turns around and sells it for a fraction of that in cash. The buyer, known as an aggregator, removes the patient information, alters the bottle, then sells it to a wholesale distributor, who sells it back to the pharmacy at a discount. So the same bottle re-enters the supply chain. It's part of a massive illegitimate drug industry the World Health Organization estimates at as much as $431 billion annually around the world. Not only a financial threat, but one with serious health consequences too. Tell me all the ways that a drug that Gilead manufactures could be counterfeit. You could have an original bottle with wrong tablets inside that's resealed to make it look like a genuine Gilead product. That's a counterfeit. You can have a cap that is not a genuine Gilead cap on a bottle. That's a counterfeit. The label itself could be a copy and not coming from our line. Gilead first learned it had a serious problem in 2020 when reports came in of Bictarvi bottles filled with an antipsychotic drug called Seroquel. That raised immediate alarms that something was amiss, and we mobilized a team to launch an extensive investigation to try to understand what was happening. What they found involved a slew of counterfeits. This bottle doesn't even contain pills, just rocks. Why do you think somebody would try to pass this off as a real bottle of prescription medicine? All they need to do is make the sale. And this man, let's call him Julio, who agreed to an interview if we concealed his identity, said it was easy to persuade patients to sell their bottles. They have AIDS, cancer, and they don't have any money. So for $100, $200, they'll sell it every day. So they'll forego the medication. They won't take the medication. They won't take the medication. Julio says he got rich even as a mid-level middleman in a hustle that billed millions to Medicare for counterfeit medications. What are the most lucrative drugs to resell? Truvada, Seroquel. He says he processed the pill bottles himself. How many bottles of pills would you have to have to fill a box? I'm going to say um, 300. And then how many boxes would you sell to the wholesaler? In a week, 1,500. The fraud achieves size and national scale because licensed distributors buy from aggregators like Julio, sell to the pharmacies, and give the whole process the sheen of legitimacy. How troubled are you by the licensed distributors? Very troubled. They're a critical cog in the scheme. Pharmacies, most pharmacies are unlikely to purchase from the fly-by-night entities that didn't exist a year ago or 30 days ago and are now offering large amounts of medication for them to purchase. And the distributors have relationships with thousands of independent pharmacies across the nation. Is there ever a deal to be had on HIV medication? Gilead sells all of its medicine to our authorized distributors at one price. 
So there's no deals to be made. Is it possible that one bottle of legitimate prescription medication gets billed and rebilled over and over again to Medicare? Yes, one bottle can be billed two, maybe three times. Stephen Mahmood is Assistant Special Agent in Charge at Health and Human Services Office of Inspector General. He leads investigations into Medicare fraud. The pharmacies that are on the receiving end of these diverted prescriptions, do they know? Some do, some don't. They're the kinds of drugs that the government pays a lot of money for people to receive. Right, yes, Medicare pays out to pharmacies a lot of money for these drugs because they are expensive and life-sustaining. It drives up the government's health care costs and adds to the more than $100 billion in waste, theft, and abuse that taxpayers pay for annually. Investigators have watched the crime in progress. This hidden camera video has never been seen in public. Shot by an undercover informant, it shows a woman, her husband and son, cleaning prescription pill bottles in a South Florida apartment. The individual in the white shirt in the middle, you can see the uh, what appears to be lighter fluid. He's using that lighter fluid, a harsh chemical, to clean the bottle and remove the, the pharmacy prescription label. That would have had the name of the patient on it. would have had the name there. of the patient on it. Okay. Because obviously no one is going to sell a drug with someone else's name on it. And they're cleaning it to make it look new again. It's a mom and pop operation. Often, it shows. So here is an example of a patient leaflet that was attached to a counterfeit Victarvi bottle that we seized from one of the wholesalers. And you can see it's a very horrible copy. It's falling apart. But in other words, if a patient were to get a bottle and have a patient leaflet like this, that would be a warning sign that something's wrong. Absolutely. It would be a warning sign, and a patient should never receive a leaflet in this type of condition. Though the companies lose money on every bottle that gets reintroduced in the system, they say their top concern is safety. Johnson & Johnson, whose HIV drug Simtuza was targeted, said in a statement it's found HIV medication bottles filled with a different product or bearing false or adulterated packaging, labeling, or instructional inserts. The company insists counterfeiting of life-saving medicines is a criminal act that puts patient lives at risk. Cancer patients cut their dosing in exchange for cash. HIV patients get paid but go without. Their viral load can increase, which makes it more likely to spread HIV to others. The pharmaceutical companies are serious about disrupting the drug diversion. Gilead Sciences and Johnson & Johnson have sued distributors and pharmacies throughout the country. Their investigations and litigation are still unfolding. These three were convicted in connection with a prescription drug counterfeiting operation. Julio served time behind bars for his pill diversion scheme and insists his counterfeiting days are behind him. And the big-time poker player? Lazaro Hernandez's jet-setting days ended abruptly this year. He was convicted in that $230 million drug counterfeiting operation. An attorney for Hernandez argued in court his gambling addiction was a driving force behind his participation in the criminal conspiracy and said Hernandez regularly took large quantities of cash obtained from his sales of diverted drugs to casinos. He pled guilty to conspiracy charges related to distributing adulterated and misbranded drugs and money laundering. He is serving a 15-year prison sentence. And the critical cog in these schemes, the distributors, none have been criminally charged, though the CEO of Scripps Wholesale was indicted in June for buying more than $150 million of illegally diverted prescription HIV medication and reselling it to pharmacies. He pled not guilty. His attorney declined to comment. Today, federal authorities say they are actively investigating other major drug counterfeiters. In October, prosecutors charged New York pharmacy owners with a $20 million scheme to buy and sell HIV medications on the black market and pay illegal kickbacks. Then, fraudulently bill Medicare, Medicaid, and private insurance companies. The proceeds allegedly went for lavish purchases, like this Mercedes Maybach. 
drug diversion is widespread and it impacts the entire country. I'm saddened and disheartened that the schemes across the entire United States and in the territories, but I'm not surprised. Fraud is always evolving.